Historians often divide Islamic history into two periods, namely the classical and modern. The classical period includes the reign of the early caliphs, Umayyad and Abbasid periods, ending with Mongol onslaught on Baghdad in 1258. From the sacking of Baghdad in the 13th century to the present is classified as the modern period. Two powerful empires of the classical period were Umayyads and Abbasids who collectively ruled the Muslim world for over six centuries. With the demise of Abbasid power, there emerged a large number of political dynasties in the Muslim world, and they continued to rule until the Europeans emerged on the political scene and colonized large parts of the Muslim world during the 18th and 19th centuries. Three powerful Muslim dynasties of the modern period were Turkish Ottomans, Persian Safavids, and Mughals of India. Although the Safavid and Mughal dynasties endured for a long time and they contributed immensely, it was the Ottomans who became the undisputed superpower of the time. Inaugurated in 1300 by Uthman Bey, a Turkish chieftain, 37 Ottoman rulers maintained power from 1300 until Ataturk formally abolished Ottoman rule in 1924 and set up the Turkish Republic. However, not all of the 37 caliphs were wise or competent. For example, Bayezid Taku was pious and competent, but Mustafa III was feeble and despotic. Sultan Muhammad Tiskinu and Suleiman Ramwan, known as the Magnificent, were on a league of their own. Both of these rulers were incredibly successful, but hugely influential. Just over a decade after the death of Sultan Muhammad II, his great-grandson, Suleiman, was born in the Asiatic province of Trabzon in 1494. Brought up and educated under the watchful gaze of his loving parents, Suleiman grew up to be a highly skilled political strategist and successful military commander. After the death of his father, Sultan Salim, Mun in 1520, Suleiman ascended the throne at the age of 26. The age of Suleiman was a unique period in history because a number of other famous rulers such as Emperor Charles V of Germany, Henry VIII and Queen Elizabeth of Britain, Francis Prembelmert of France, Akbar the Great of India, Safavid Shah Ismail in Persia, and Martin Luther's Protestant movement were all at the global scene at the time. Bur Sultan Suleiman was destined to outshine all his great contemporaries by the dint of his character and personality. During his long 46 years reign, Suleiman completely transformed the fortunes of the Ottoman Empire. Under his tutelage, Ottoman rule rapidly expanded both in the East and the West, extending across three continents, namely Asia, Africa, and Europe. He also successfully resolved all the major political and military conflicts that existed within the Ottoman territories at the time, and then turned his attention to diplomacy and international affairs. Although Sultan Suleiman was a gentle and peace-loving person, however, he did not tolerate injustice and cruelty. He instigated military action against Louis II, the oppressive king of Hungary, and in the process captured Belgrade. He then marched into the city of Budapest and led an expedition against the Knights of St. John in the Mediterranean island of Rhodes. In 1529, Suleiman laid siege to Vienna, which lasted for three months and returned to Istanbul without capturing the city. Whole of Europe breathed a great sigh of relief. His failure to annex this historic city marked a decisive turning point in both Muslim and European history. The people of Vienna and Europe rejoiced and celebrated, marking the day as the Day of Deliverance. Suleiman was a veteran military commander who personally led no less than 13 military campaigns across Europe, Africa, and Asia to consolidate Ottoman power and dominance. He was also a successful political leader who transformed Ottoman Empire into one of the great military powers of all time. His army was highly trained, well-equipped, and a disciplined fighting force. His fleet of vessels was the largest in the world, and they acquired complete supremacy of the seas under Admiral Khairuddin Barbarossa. If the Sultan was a great leader, then he must be considered one of the most prolific builders in history. During his reign, he built some of the most beautiful and exquisite mosques, colleges, schools, and palaces. Under his patronage, Mimar Sinan, one of the greatest architects in history, produced some of the Muslim world's architectural masterpieces. Suleiman was very firm, but certainly not an oppressor. He was a just, enlightened, and cultured sovereign who reformed the archaic Ottoman legal system and made the administration of justice, fairness, and equality across his dominions the central pillar of his government. He showered his subjects with wealth, prosperity, and generosity at a time when people throughout Europe and Asia were being oppressed and humiliated by their own rulers. The Sultan was a devout Muslim who took his faith seriously, unlike a number of other Ottoman rulers. As an accomplished poet, in his spare time he committed the Quran in writing and was a generous patron of education, science, arts, and culture. 
The Ottoman Empire reached its peak under his leadership. Thus his reign is generally regarded as the most glorious period in Ottoman history. The people of Europe, especially the Italians, admired him so much that he became famous as El Magnifique, whilst the Muslims bestowed upon him the title of Lawgiver. Suleiman died in 1566 at the age of 72 and was buried in Istanbul. He was not only a champion of Ottomans, but also one of the greatest Muslim rulers of all time. If you enjoyed this video and would like more, please subscribe and share.